folks. Um, welcome to the second release of the 1.30 Kubernetes Retro. No, I got that backwards. The second retro of the 1.30 release. Um, yep, if you haven't added your items to the section, please go ahead and do that. As a reminder, as always, this um, meeting is under the CNCF Code of Conduct, so please be kind to each other. I'm going to ask for a volunteer to take notes. Uh, I'll do it. All right. Um, fantastic. Okay. All the way from the top. Um, this is follow up from 1.29, and at the bottom we also have follow up from the previous retro. Um, so first thing first, um, Shriram or Mark, are either of you here to speak on this? Yeah. Uh, hey. Uh, so after the last, uh, like the mid-cycle retro call, uh, we had a call with uh, the enhancements uh, subproject lead, Kirsten, and uh, we have started uh, a discussion on how we can we can first the kept template and what like how we can do that iteratively. So we have a meeting tomorrow. So after that call, we did not have much meetings, but uh, Kristen had mentioned that she'll set up a board, a project board where we can track uh, the work necessary for this. So we will be talking more tomorrow. Okay. Um, this item is from James. Uh, I talked to James and went ahead and canceled it um, because he uh, it doesn't seem like we still have a need for this. I think we talked about this last time. Um, next up is documentation for the webinar. I still owe this and I need to get on it ASAP. Um, Shriram, uh, Enhancement Board Automation. Yeah, so uh, for this one, I haven't started, like I haven't like, done anything yet, but I have a couple of ideas which I had, uh, I had been talking with Mohammed, the enhancement speed for 130 and uh, I'll be leading the next uh, enhancement team so I thought I can try that out uh, by setting up the board and all that. Okay. Hope hopefully um, we can like, uh, write more documentation also and yeah. get it in a better place for the next release like 132. Sounds good. Do you need any help with that? Uh, I don't have uh, like anything to ask for right now, but uh, I'll present it in the exit release meetings, I guess. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Um, and then from the previous retro, um, Drew, the first two action items are yours. Yeah, sorry. Oh, Drew, right, yeah, you said you were running late. Oh yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I've got a PR open to um, do, well, no, I don't have the PR open yet. I need to push my commit, but yeah, I'm going to make some changes to the handbook and then um, share the slide deck uh, that I made with Princess for the next release. Sounds good. Um, the next two are done by Catch. You want to speak anything about that? Uh, those are done. They're, they're done. The updates are made. The PRs are merged. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Shriram? Yeah, sorry. So, uh, I had a PR open for, uh, adding some documentation related to the enhancements, uh, like enabling the sync job. So after talking with Mohammed, I had added, uh, this change to that PR that is like done and i think it was reviewed once but after i added this like the production readiness uh github group and the uh the robot it has been, like, been reviewed but the pr is there we can like, merge it before we start the next release okay who is the right person um to review that and can you drop the pr link in, like just right in here please oh, yeah. no rush uh, should i link the pr in the talk um yeah it's just wherever you set PRs ready. That'd be good. Yep. 
I think Mohammad or Nina, the previous enhancements lead, can to view it. Yep, I can okay. take a look. Thanks. Thanks, Nina. All right. Um, the next two are um, documentations by Drew, which are done. Thank you, Drew. Um, Mohammed, if you're here, I think we talked about adding additional documentation for the enhancement team. Uh, yes, uh, I've added uh, in a PR, and the PR is waiting for the review. Yeah. All right. Um, so could you also drop that PR in there so it, we see it and we can review it? Uh, yes, uh, I guess I don't have enough access to edit this document. I'm not sure why. Interesting. Um, if you make a suggestion, I will approve it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Vium, the next two slash three uh, are yours. Yeah. So I have yet to start on the docs part, uh, the automation of branch things. I have to start working on that. Uh, I've started working on creating a playlist for the release signal team. Uh, I recorded a video and I have to record another one. On the third part, changing the on-call culture and modifying the release uh, signal handbook. I have made a PR to modify the release signal handbook, which was merged today itself. And there are a few more changes that I need to make, but I'll merge those as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we talked about the, uh, the playlist in the SIG release channel today. Um, and then I believe this um, changing all call culture for release signal has been done in practice, but is that documented beyond slash Paco? Yeah, uh, that has to be added into the documentation. Right now, the documentation links to a spreadsheet and that has like the titles like primary observer. So that needs to be modified and a new Excel like spreadsheet needs to be created with new titles and sort of a shared responsibility. So I'll work on that. Sounds good. Um, and then Drew, I think you have um, the next action item. Yeah, so yeah, I'll be adding documentation on how to take over a um, contributor's documentation. Um, if, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll include that in the commit that I'm going to push soon. Okay, sounds good. Um, that is all the action items for now. Um, I will say one thing that I didn't do is to move this to the, uh, the GitHub tracking board um, for the EA. So I will put that as an action item for me, actually. Move AI to... Okay. Um, without further ado, we will get into it. Um, so let's start off with what went well in 1.30. Um, Kat? Hello. Uh, the docs freeze process was great. Um, that was pretty nearly flawless. We only had one thing that needed an exception request, and they filed that exception request in a timely manner, and we had a reasonable discussion and got it in under, under the line. Um, it did, in fact, make things easier for SIG docs or at least more predictable for SIG docs. And uh, at least from my perspective, uh, radically reduced the stress on both SIG docs and release docs. So um, good job to Drew um, managing that. It was a big change, um, a big thing for people to get used to. Um, it's an extra real deadline, but um, you managed it super well. So thank you for that. Fantastic. Um, next up, uh... Amit, here. Hey. Uh, yeah, I just found that the blog on also opted in um, for comps for the PG blog release as well as um, template release were quite responsive and on the ball. So that's really something nice to say. Fantastic. Rashawn, um, seems like the release notes team uh, went well. Don't know if Rashawn is here. If not, I can just read it. 
where Sean said that there was great communication in release notes on code reviews and release notes improvement by the 130 team and other release notes member. So thank you to the release notes team for that. Um, we are going to hop into the um, what could have gone better in 1.30. Um, yeah, Kat, um, you got the first item with um, Thomas Handbook. Yeah, so um, there was a little bit of a snafu um, that was not really necessarily anybody's fault, but it was something that went wrong. Um, part of it was a lack of documentation in the release docs handbook about the SIG docs blog subproject. Um, and that resulted in a blog that was erroneously tagged as a feature blog merging um, what in a way that to us looked early. It looked to us like a feature blog had been published early. So um, Natalie and I reverted that PR um, from KubeCon, and it resulted in um, some fairly significant back and forth between us and um, somebody from SIG Docs. Uh, it was unclear who had ownership of that in in reality. Um, from our perspective, release comms had ownership of that, not uh, SigDocs blog. SigDocs blog felt differently. Um, and part of the confusion was uh, around like just not the the comms team not being aware that SigDocs blog, uh, exists as a sub project and who owns what there. Um, I, I still think we owned that and that was our call whether or not that should merge. But um, I am going to update the comms handbook with information on the SIG docs blog uh, sub project. Uh, Kristen already has a PR to update the handbook. That's very convenient. Thank you, Kristen. Um, yeah, because we they, they should work a little bit more closely together than they do. They don't have a lot of involvement um, Comms has historically relied on SIG Docs proper and not the blog sub project, but they uh, do actually have more ownership over the feature blogs than SIG Docs proper does. Yeah, I, I just uh, would add, yeah, in that PR, I started a paragraph describing that relationship and that Thank that you. outreach should happen sooner in the release cycle to the SIG Docs blog sub project. And if you want to enhance that, with any specifics that would be greatly we'll, appreciated. Absolutely will do. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so Kat, if you want to add that to the bottom as an action item, um sure will. that would be much appreciated. I was just gonna highlight things and come back to it, but if you need to do that, yeah. we are good. And then Natalie, if you're here, I believe this is the same issue that you just spoke about, Kat. Would you want us to add anything yeah. to that, Natalie? Ooh, Natalie might not be here. She's on a plane, I think. Okay. Yeah, okay. she's on her. She's yeah, on her she's way back one. from the U.S. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the same. That's the same right. issue that I was talking about. That is the actual yeah. blog that was the problem. Okay. Yeah, and to to clarify the ownership, like that we why we thought this was fell under our remit was we were tracking that it was in the enhancements board and we were tracking it. Um as a feature blog and all the communication that happened on the issue was from our team. So like we were, yeah, I guess pretty blindsided when it, when it published. <laughs> okay. Early. Um, sounds good. I'm just reading Tim's comment in the SIG release channel just to make sure I don't miss anything in relation to this topic. I don't think there's anything there. Yeah, I'm um, dropping his in the doc as I go. Okay, okay. Um, are you fine like doing two things at the same time or do you want to want to help taking notes? <laughs> uh, if somebody can take my notes while I'm speaking, that would be great. But um, otherwise, yeah, I can do both. Um, yeah, I can do on. Oh, thank you. Um, all right, so beside updating um, the comms handbook, is there anything that we can do better in the next release in the action items here? Okay. Um, if not, I will move on to the next point. Amit, you have um, 
Let's start with this one. Um, something reviewers um, suggest or staggered. Is this in relation to comps? Uh, yes. So this is relation with the comps. Yes, we. Um, I felt that uh, there were reviewers who would make a comment today and then tomorrow and day after tomorrow and it just kept going on to drag out the entire PR, which feels very haphazard. Um, I feel that reviews should be time boxed in order to ensure that uh, reviewers have a fixed time frame in which they can respond to the best of their ability uh, for a specific PR. And that's pretty much it, say three days, five days, whatever it is. Um, it shouldn't drag out for the length of the entire PR because it drags out the whole PR process and approval cycle. Okay, um, Christian and Kat, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I think that that would require a lot of coordination with uh, a lot of different people. It would require a lot of coordinating with SIG docs and with uh, tech leads and chairs of every single SIG. Um, chairs in every single SIG maybe is easier to handle because they tend to have uh, less verbose reviews than some SIG docs reviewers, but I don't know how SIG docs is going to react to that. Um, they're already overloaded pretty badly. So is this something that's going to create more work for them by like compressing all of the reviews into like a three to five day span? Or is this something that's going to make things easier for them? It's hard to tell there. I think there will be pushback if we give them only a five-day window in which to review all of the blogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it's that would be a pretty heavy, heavy lift or expectation on on Sig Docs. Um, personally, sorry. Um, I I think uh, what what I meant to say is from the time of the first comment of say Sig Docs, then it should be within like the comments should kind of flow into place, if that makes sense. How would we manage that? Would the shadows be noting yes. in the docs, in the tracking yes. board? Yeah, so I think self-managed. So one is the shadows would be noting as well as the SIG docs, um, approvers, et cetera. So if I reply today with certain recommendations, because I've only had time today to actually check the specific PR. Only mm -hmm. within five next days, I uh, try to the best of my ability to provide all the feedback. Um, would that work, uh, uh, you reckon? Um, I think it might, but I think we also need SIG Docs' buy-in before we do this. Uh, mm -hmm. Because this is, this is we can't like unilaterally make a change to the way they review things. Mm -hmm. um, I know that some PRs do go on way too long. Sometimes you get a reviewer who uh, does a, a rough pass uh, and gives you sweeping changes. And then uh, two weeks later does another pass and gives you 40,000 nits. I know, and it's uh, it's irritating, but we can't make a unilateral change to the way SIG Docs reviews things. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to talk to them about that. Okay. Um, okay. Fair enough. I'm going to let Steven talk as his hand up for a while. Okay. Yeah, so real quick, I think our whatever deadlines that we set for the SIG needs to incorporate review time. Um, the, the earlier points, um, I... You know, if I'm doing reviews, I'm doing reviews at very random times, right? So it's not necessarily going to be within a, a specific time window. Um, I think we need to be, if we're if we're saying there is a problem, um, I think we need to attempt to mitigate the problem on our side with our deadlines. Um, I think we can definitely have a conversation with SIG Docs, um, of course, but uh, this is an open source project, right? So there, there's there's going to be a limit to what we can request people to do with the time that they may be spending on their off hours um, to, to, to do reviews, actually. We might 
consider moving some of the deadline or the uh, opening the deadlines earlier for, for the reviews so people have a little longer to complete their reviews instead of being prescriptive about this has to be done within five days or whatever. Just maybe yeah, adjust exactly. the adjustments on our end to and, be a and more what will naturally what, yeah and what will naturally happen is we will pull the deadline up or something like that to to give some more time and someone will complain about the deadline being too early, right? In a different area. So it's it is a, it is definitely a balancing act, and I think um, of calibration kind of in in um, in the general case because um, we had discussed this on the steering level as well. Is um, what if we had for for SIG release? What if we had a uh, kind of timeline, a historical timeline of changes that were made across the uh, release deadlines, um, so we can see if things are working or not working. Okay. Um, so I think, I think we can agree that this is a, a pain point in, in the review process, but there's nothing we can ask psych docs to do in the moment. Um, do we want to move the comms deadline to the earlier? Like what is, what possible action items do we want to take out of this? Do we want to just take more time and observe, you know, what the behavior of the next release is? Frederick, do you have your hand up? Yeah, so one option as well that we could consider is we could also split up the uh, the timeline for the type of review. So perhaps we could say, like, if it's sweeping changes, we want those to be earlier than not. But if the content looks good and it's primarily just uh, how do we make sure that the wording is uh, is uh, approachable and and uh, and in good shape, then like there's way less risk in that particular in that particular side, and we could let that one linger for uh, for a longer period of time. So what? Give people uh like a tech LGTM deadline, and then uh a this is readable deadline. Per perhaps yeah, like like what is the actual like core content we're trying to say as as one, and F and the other one would be like um if there's if there's any little nits or things that people want changed that that could be given a longer one and, and that way because those ones tend to be a lot easier in terms of uh in terms of resolving each one of them and but but i think the the biggest risk is if we extend the deadline too too long and the changes are like we really need to rewrite the whole thing uh because it's not hitting whatever needs to be done like that's uh, like that. That's really dangerous, and will definitely overload the uh, the person who's who's writing the uh, uh, the blog. Okay, um, I'm hesitant to add more deadlines um, uh, in in this context, but perhaps something like a tag would be good, like like tag LGTM, so we know that the technical review is done. Um, what what is your thought on this, Kristen? So I think informally, we saw some people adding that they, it wasn't a tag, but they would say, you know, tech, tech, LGTM, which I hadn't seen like in the previous release. So maybe if we formalize that more. We so are supposed we, to get tech what? LGTMs. So if we, yeah. we know what has, what has been completed versus not. Um, Jordan, uh, you have your hand up for yeah. probably tech uh, Yeah, I, I think. Um... Clarity around tech LGTM, tech LGTM would be great. I, uh, for SIG off, I think there were some cases where we had actually done a sweep and said like this, this looks good, and then kind of got pinged later. Like, can we get a tech LGTM on this? And we we're like, oh wait, I thought we already did that. Were you waiting on us? Um, and so, uh, yeah, just clarity around how to indicate that and how to track that would be would be great. Um, I think also for the tech side, there's usually a narrower set of people who kind of can review something with an eye. So you, sometimes you have the author and like one other person from the SIG. Who, and so they're, one is writing it and one is reviewing it. Uh, whereas for the, the doc readability kind of doc standard stuff, there might be a broader set of reviewers, maybe. Um, but yeah, clarity around how we can indicate that more clearly. And so you're not waiting on us would be awesome. Uh, can I make a suggestion? Um, so when you're doing like writing docs that SIG docs is reviewing, I think that, um, because you're dealing with reviewers who have all been in the project and around the project for a million years and know who you are, 
there's no need for you to say like, oh, this is a tech LGTM because they just see your username and they know who you are. But the release team isn't like that. Um, we've got so many like new people floating in and out of it. Um, honestly, it might be helpful to just comment with tech LGTM, you know? Yeah, uh, sure. I, I thought we had done that, but maybe we didn't do it clearly enough or maybe- You, you might have done it on a couple, um, but you know, we go, okay. we go through a lot of PR. So yeah, if you just, we'll, we'll um, work on communicating that. Um, we can update some of the templates that comms and docs use to interact with y'all um, to ask for updates that specify that. Okay, um, I'm gonna time box this discussion here. Okay. I think the the outcome of this is just to improve communications on our ends to just like set our expectation clear that we want, you know, technical reviews done first and foremost. Sure. Um, okay, so um, yeah, that would go into the action item section. Please and thank you, Kat. Um, mm -hmm. And then Ahmed, I think you have um, a comment about the APAC meeting time, or is it about the Wednesday meeting? Uh, it's generally all the other meetings which are not APAC based. Um, most of them are at around 3 a.m. Oceana, which would make it difficult for um, any newbies to get involved in the release team um, from the Oceana region. So I'm not sure if we could do anything about it or if potentially uh, the APAC meetings start from the beginning of the release meetings, because I think the APAC meetings only start um, mid-cycle. Uh, that is a great point. And actually, Kat and I have been talking to Priyanka about it, um, because I think it's a pain point for her as well. Priyanka is the incoming um, Emeritus Advisor. And she is going to discuss with us Angelos and then bring this again into um, the 1.31 release team because we want to see the demographic, time demographics of those folks and, and get them to probably vote on a APAC meeting. But there is discussion going on about starting a APAC meeting at the beginning of um, the release. Um, okay. Um, Rashawn, I think you have the next two items. All right, is Rashawn not here? Okay. Uh, yeah, he's um, not here. Um, I will read it. Um, so the first thing is that we need to update the roles and responsibility of the release notes team and distinguish responsibilities between release notes and comms. Um, uh, Nina, do you want to speak to this? Is this just like a improvement in documentation? Uh, yes. So I, I think part of it is we just need to update the um, release notes team handbook to um, like kind of distinguish um, some differences. And I, I think part of it is the major themes this release uh, weren't really the responsibility of the release notes team, even though they had been in the past. Like we did the initial reach out, but um, by the end of the release, um, it was kind of, I think, handed over to the comms team. Um, so I don't know if that's what we want to do in the future releases. And if it is, we should probably highlight that as a, um, a, a change in the handbook. Um, or, or like if major themes are a thing that we want to keep doing. Okay. Yeah, that's Kat, a separate I question. Thoughts on this. <laughs> I do have uh, thoughts on this. Um, I do not like the term major themes. Uh, it feels like an artifact of the way things were done 10,000 releases ago. We no longer have major themes, and I would like to see that function either go away entirely or be moved over to comms entirely. It feels like something that release notes should not be touching. So if we want that to move over to comms entirely with a slight rework because the term major themes is nonsensical, uh, I am more than happy to open that PR. I want it gone so bad. Yeah, and, and I think that would also be beneficial for release notes because then um, it can focus on like some, because we ran into some curl issues um, mm -hmm. that like, I think uh, we can spend the time to improve, um, but it, it does seem like it's kind of strange that like our, most of the responsibilities of release notes is just opening, uh, you know, release PR with the curl tool. And then um, separately, we also do all this outreach that yeah. is completely separate from the actual like 
it really starts PR that gets generated. It feels um, very weird. I don't like it as part of the release notes team yeah. at all. So um, if you want it gone, I will do my best to get rid of it or put it somewhere where it makes more sense. Um, Kristen, so, it's, oh, go ahead, Stephen. Sorry, yeah, this is just a call out to, um, and uh, Kat, you and I have discussed, but uh, this is a kind of a call out to, there is a conversation to be had around docs and release notes and comms and where the overlaps are and if we need to reconfigure the responsibilities of those teams. There's lots of stuff that happens across those boundaries that like, I think at the time that release notes, you know, that we were doing this many, many moons ago, um, release notes had the most context because those were the people who were reviewing all of the release notes that were going into each of the PRs, right? So being able to distill the, the themes based on PRs that you were reviewing, right? And and that function has fundamentally changed given the, the tooling that we've put in place. So um, there's a larger discussion to be had, had organizationally on those teams. Uh, I think it's not just about the major themes. Yeah. Um, I, I could honestly see moving all of release notes responsibilities over to docs. But uh no, that's a hot take, Kat. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna take a smaller action item out of this. Um and uh Nina, if uh we can assign you an action item to just okay, can we make a decision that Kat, you're gonna change the language around major theme and we're gonna continue having that conversation and then Nina work with Kat to improve the documentation around release notes to clarify that that is probably no longer release notes responsibility. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's I, do I that. think having the comms lead also looped in would be good. Um because I'm imagining like a lot of the handbook stuff that currently lives in release notes would kind of be moved over there. So if, okay. if we want to keep major themes, but yeah. The, um, definitely will loop in comms lead. That's Abby, right? If if uh, she's here. But go ahead, Kristen. Oh, I was just gonna say there's there's you know already some changes that are happening in that PR where because we didn't include the the last two uh, release blogs we haven't structured those around major themes I um so I'm gonna change like the little template we use um to not to reflect that we've removed that from the release blog at least okay so uh... I'm also reading the comments in the chat, so my brain is in like three places at the same time. Um, so this is a conversation to be had between comms and release notes to clarify this in the uh, documentation. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And then next item is also release note related. Would it be helpful to define a release notes draft PR merge deadline. Currently, the timeline only defines when the branch is created, and we assume to get the PR done sometimes before the next branch is made. Um, and then, I don't, I don't know if this is... I think that's slightly separate. Um, okay. I, I'm not sure who put it down, but uh, yeah, uh, I think we should talk about the uh, timeline first, because this is... Okay. I, I agree with this one, even though I didn't put it down. Um, like, I, I think a lot of our release notes PRs had... Um, they had kind of ambiguous deadlines. So we put up a PR and like slowly like reviews would trickle in. Um, so I think having like a deadline, like so we don't have overlap between release note um, PRs would be good because um, like PRs that would just be in review for a long time, um, would kind of push against the the following release notes a PR that had to go up. So um, maybe having a, a deadline, like within a week, you have to have this merged. Um, and then also like, you know, with the caveat that like if the the branch isn't cut, then there is some leeway there. But and just to clarify, this will be like an internal deadline. Yes. Uh, yeah. Whoever's responsible to cut that. Okay. Exactly. So uh, I'm imagining it's gonna be something in the handbook to say like, okay, this is like, you know, when the branch is cut, this is by the time where we should like merge the release notes in. And that gives us a better way of updating statuses during the um the internal release team like sync. Um, so like if we're missing, we're uh, intent, like if we think we're going to miss the uh, merge deadline, we can report like a yellow status instead of like having a generic, oh, like it's been up for review right. for a while. So Right. Uh, 
I think that that is up to the sub team lead, um, the in, the incoming sub team lead for release notes, which um, I believe is is you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so um, you are empowered to do that. If you want to throw extra internal deadlines on your team, you can and you should. I did it when I ran comms. I did it when I ran docs. Um, by all means, if that makes it easier for you to manage, go ahead and do it. And I, I guess has that helped in the past, like having internal deadlines? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it made running docs way easier. Um, I think especially if that helps with like reporting status as well, that's that's a big plus. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah, the then... next one is, is like kind of related to the uh, fixes. There is um, so one thing that um, like currently release notes is kind of really heavily relying on Krell. So a lot of um, the day to day is just like, um, yeah, like the the I I didn't write the curl progress, but this is a nice to have. So um, once when when you start like creating your release notes PR, um, having like a sense of how long it'll take, um, is like definitely a good feature because it lets you like plan out your time. Um, so I don't know if this is like really the job of the release notes team, like if we should be taking on more responsibility for, um, you know like ironing out kinks with Krell or um, if part of the release notes team should be going to like the release um, uh, tooling like meetings and and like advocating for improvements there. Um, but it is, it's like kind of separate from, I, I know we talked about briefly like merging release notes and docs, but the, the way I say like uh, the comms part I think is separate, but there are um, things that like are, are currently like hindering the release notes um, ability to like smoothly put up a PR that um, are, are either the responsible of the release notes like fix uh, for 131 or like we need to work with um, like whoever maintains curl to, uh, to to do improvements. So quick comment here. Um, uh, all all hands that can work on tooling are welcome. PRs are absolutely welcome. Um, the release engineering subproject maintains Krell, um, but that does not um, stop people from contributing to it. We, we highly encourage it. So even if the contribution is to clearly detail what has to happen for the feature to be written, um, that that's useful. Yes. So one uh, like idea I had was maybe as part of the handbook, as we like in the application process, we highlight that. Um, as part of the release notes, like there are improvements that you can make to Corel and they're like are encouraged and um, like may maybe even expected of you, um, like as we run into them. So like some releases might be very smooth and nothing will break and everything's great. But as things break, like part of the release notes job is to look into those uh, issues. I hesitate totally to say it should be expected of a member yeah. of the release team to make improvements to Krell, but uh, encouraged, yes. Yeah, that tool is is here for us to make like release releasing Kubernetes easier, and I think part of re releasing Kubernetes is is how useful is the tool to the release team, right? So there is. Definitely an encouragement. Um, I think depending on the team um, and component of Krell, it may be a requirement, right? So for folks who are spending time on the release, um, you know, on the release management aspect of the release team, then then yes, it's a if this thing is broken, you need to come and fix it or help us fix it. Um, so so yeah, I think uh, clarity would be would be good there, um, but definitely encouragement. Lots of lots of encouragement. So then for takeaways, like update the handbook, uh, highlight that you're encouraged to like contribute to improving the tooling um, and also add that to like the like shadows Q&A maybe section. Yeah, I but think the, uh, sorry for like Nina, because you're leading the next um, the next release. Like, I think that's something that you can just like look for as a goal. Like, you know, you want this feature. And, and so think about how you want it delivered in the next release would be cool. Yeah. And the next one is is kind of the same thing. It's uh there were like some uh issues that um we like uh, listed as part of um 
things you've run into with curl in 130. Um, and they're not like fixed yet, but work in progress. So um, I can create an issue for that as, or like there is an issue already, but we can put that as an action item. Yeah, and if you want to bring it up in the SIG release meeting where um, the uh, release engineering folks will hang out, I think that's also a great uh, discussion item there. Yep, sounds good. Um, Kristen, did we talk about this already? Is there anything you want to add about major theme handoff? Yeah, I don't have anything to add that. It seems like we covered that in enough detail. Okay, fantastic. And then Kat, by request of Tim about um, the documentation. Yeah, uh, Tim sent me about 40,000 things to add, uh, most of which were not actually relevant to the um, release team, but this one is. So there were quite a lot of post-merge updates and requests for the release blog. Uh, we didn't call out the features in the release announcements that I thought were important to end users. This is subjective, but for example, I'd have made uh, more about validating admission policy, structured authentication configuration, and structured, structured authentication. Wow, we just put the same thing twice. Um, my take on this is that while the release blog does not have a major theme section anymore, we still largely select the things that get mentioned in the release blog based on what SIGs suggest. And there was quite a lot of outreach done on exactly that topic. And then a few additional things added. Um, I don't think it's reasonable to expect that the comms team have a deep technical understanding of the relevance of every single cap that makes it into the release. So while it's unfortunate that the uh, caps that he thought were most important were not initially in the release blog, um, I think that that is probably a fairly common occurrence, that we don't have the changes that one individual considers to be the most important included. Um, so how do we fix this in the future? Um, this is this is partly on, on SIG leads and tech leads um, telling the comms team that this feature is important and needs to be prominently included in the blog. That That's not, comms can't be expected to deeply understand every single feature in the release that that is on the owning sig to say i would like this kept featured in the blog please it is important um, right and and maybe the conversation should be about how do we gather that information from the leads better um, that can maybe... be on changing the um major themes collection yeah yeah the collection process yeah maybe. yeah yeah just a plus one what kat was saying um, I had the same experience as well working with, with docs and also with comms. Like, I think that not only does this apply to the release blog, but it also applies to the blogs that people write for their enhancements. Um, I don't always see blogs created for the enhancements that I think may, may warrant a blog. Um, however, they come from whoever actually is like excited. Like we usually get like 20 things from storage because they're very active. Say, um, yeah, this this was I don't have any suggestions for improvement, but just like I completely agree with what Kat's saying. So I'll just point out too that those specific features did get dedicated blog posts. So they sure uh, did. Like I that that seems totally fine to me, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, but I agree that like this is a responsibility that leads to kind of signal boost what the big important things from their perspectives are. I'm curious. Um, oh. I'm curious, Kat, if you had any comment about the uh, fixes that we put in after the the blog got published. Uh, Tim called out that hadn't happened for the last five years or something. I'm not sure <laughs> we have any like actual like data yeah. to back that up. But I, I mean, I didn't feel it was a very you know an invasive or like uh, I'm consuming thing. But obviously, we would not want to encourage that. But there was a I, lot of time given to to for people to review and add their suggestions, you know, before we publish. So it it was minor, a minor annoyance to me, but I'm sure it's not something we want to encourage. Yeah, I have no idea whether or not that's true. My gut is it's absolutely not the first time we've added stuff to the release blog after the fact within like the first couple of days. Um, but I can't prove that. Uh, I would have to go digging to prove it and I don't think it's worth it. Um, we are 
an open source project and this is the release blog. We are not like beholden to the laws of journalistic integrity. And if we want to add blurbs to the release blog the day after, as long as there's a note that this was updated, um, I don't think that that is a massive problem. It's certainly something that we should avoid um, if it was just some random small change that nobody cares about, I probably would have said no, but it was something like relatively okay. This should probably be included. If they're willing to do the work and they're willing to get it in today, we can make room for this. Okay. Um, I'm going to time box this quickly. It seems like there's not much of an action item out of this, except that it continues to be the responsibility of sig leads. And it's, you know, something we've noticed in the past. Stephen, you have your hands up. Uh, yeah, basically what Kat said. I think, I think if our, our state of play was well, this thing hasn't moved in five years or something, then we wouldn't be moving at all. Um, I think yeah. it's reasonable to do updates to the release blog. I think it's reasonable for features that people want to highlight, um, to exist as separate, um, blogs that in fact, I feel like that's even more reverent, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think we analyze changes as they come. Honestly, right, and and something that is material enough to be updated in a release blog, uh, kind of from the the journalistic integrity standpoint. As long as we are updating that the blog has been updated, um, you know, for for clarity, um, or for major snafus, um, I think that's completely reasonable. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to uh, Viom's uh, dashboard problems. So this was largely discussed in the previous points about release management tooling. This is also a similar problem. There are, there are some open issues around release management. This cycle and the last cycle too, um, the script wasn't working properly and we had to manually make some changes to get the boards up. So that usually delays the time that the, those boards get up. So, I mean, it's just like if anyone could help in that area or migrating from Python to Golang, so that's all about this point. It's most of good to have from the release team, but not mandatory. Um, okay, let me think about um, what kind of what kind of help do you need here? Yeah. Um, so this largely requires help from actually there, there's an issue to migrate the release management scripts from Python to Golang, and there is a major script that generates those configurations for the dashboards, 1.30, informing and blocking. So that needs to be migrated. And then there are some problems with the actual like data in those jobs. So the pro config is not correctly structured or some elements are missing. So that also needed to, those uh, components are also needed to be added. So that would require someone from that particular SIG or someone who has technical expertise in that area to actually have a config in place for that particular job. So those okay. are the major things that are required here. Um, Jeremy, you have your hand up. Uh, you are also muted right now, Jeremy. Sorry, I was gonna put my hand down. Um, I was gonna say exactly uh, what was just said. There are some issues open to track this already. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a known problem. We just need to, to work on it. Um, the biggest changes I think right now that if anybody wants to dig in, there are some, some work to move the current stuff from Python to Golang. And if you're familiar with both of those, that'd be a great place to help. Okay. So sounds like it's uh, already been tracked and a known issue. Thank you for bringing that up. You can see the impact of that in the release. Um, I have about four items here and, and seven minutes left. Let's see how far we go. Um, Drew, KubeCon, and Doc Freeze. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, so I'm going to put something in the handbook to emphasize um, coordinating a little bit more intentionally with SIG Docs around the time that we start our documentation review. Because um, I did hear, I, I think we got some feedback that um, the uh approvals were sort of rushed around the doc freeze deadline um so we want to make sure that like um we're a little more coordinated next time okay um so this will go into the um 
Doc's handbook about how to coordinate with say Doc's a, a, around Doc's freeze. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually the bullet point above. Um, but yeah. I'm, okay, I'm totally lost in the sauce. Uh, okay. Um, I think this should go above here. Um, okay. I I see the concern. So your concern is that the review of these documentation is rush for the deadline. Yeah. Um, what did is the action item you suggest is um better coordination with the the review of the docs or sig docs? Um. So better coordination with sig docs, just to sort of call out that hey, we've like. Um, we have doc freeze coming up. Um, what's what's the plan that we have in place? Um, like, do we have anything that's upcoming? Like, I, I hear it's going to be pretty uncommon to have KubeCon um, during the review block, but um, just kind of coming up with a more intentional plan on getting the reviews wrapped up. Okay. And is this your responsibility of the docs team lead or doc shadow? Um, it could be either. Um, just making sure that um, we have a dedicated conversation in a SIG docs meeting. Okay. Um, so documentation action item. And can I get you to own that, Drew? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, you're also uh, have the next point about load balancing with SIG docs. Yeah, um, I know. So our handbook the release docs handbook encourages um, reviews and gives um, an explanation on how to give reviews for um, uh, for the documentation. Um, I'm curious if we want to, if there's any way we want to encourage this or do this more, um, just kind of hearing that um, it sounds like SIG docs has really short capacity. Yes. Okay. Um, do we have any ideas on how we want to? Um, should I just like call try to put a lot more emphasis on that in the in the handbook? Yeah, maybe just um like so realistically, towards the end of the release, each um each doc shadow probably only has between like four and ten PRs assigned to them, right? That is a that is a quantity that they can handle reviewing at least for like grammatical accuracy and style guide so like like little stuff like you consistently see people put um for instance this release they'll put 1.30 instead of v1.30 v1.30 is correct according to our style guide and anything else is wrong so um little stuff like that i think that's that is achievable for your shadows to to do for just the prs that are assigned to them Okay. Okay. Um, we are at three minutes left and about two action item, and I don't want to rush these. Um, do we feel like there's a need for a third retro? Is is a question I have for everyone. My thoughts is a no, but we also like had a lot to discuss here. Okay. Uh, let's take this async, I think, for these last yeah. two. Okay. Um, okay, so I will go ahead and create probably a thread in SIG release for these two items, and then hopefully we can have a discussion there. That sounds good with everyone. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much, folks, for participating. It's a good time as always, and have a good rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you.